Welcome back to NTV Weekend Edition. It's time for The Big Debate. My name is Joel Senyonyi. On The Big Debate tonight, we look at the readiness of who? The Uganda Police Force. They seem to be all T's crossed, all I's dotted for the election. Now, while some people feel safe uh, by the readiness which the police force is putting out there with the armored cars, etc., etc., some people are worried. So, is there cause to be worried or is this a sign that we should be safe? All is going to be well. That's coming up on the big debate. All right, welcome to the big debate. <laughs> We're just chatting, uh, talking about the concrete mixers too. Some people are saying that uh, the reason police has bought concrete mixers too is uh, because oftentimes you people have been denied, have, have been accused of not having concrete evidence. So now that there's concrete mixers, <laughs> concrete evidence it will be. My guest, uh, Assistant Commissioner of Police, he just got promoted. Congratulations to you, Pauline Amaye, previously much. Senior Superintendent of Police. Yes. Now you're a very powerful lady. Thank you. It's good to have you here on and the I'm day that uh, you get promoted. You well. And of you. course, Council Robert Kirunda, one of those sharp lawyers. I met uh, some of his students today and they said that our teacher is good. Let's dig in. Um, when you see that, Robert, for example, yes. the armored cars and so on, do you feel worried? Do you feel safe? I feel sad. <laughs> Why? Uh, I feel sad because just earlier today I was listening to a book. I began to go through a book called Dinner with Mugabe. Mm. Dinner with Mugabe is a, is, a, is a story of the man that we know as Robert Mugabe, what influenced him going from a kind gentleman who would inquire about babies of strangers to being the person that we know him to be today. And in there they talk about the 5th Brigade. And so the 5th Brigade and the role that they played in, in, in Zimbabwe. And then I thought about Laurent Gbagbo and the post-election violence that we saw in his country. And then I thought about Nairobi in 2008. And then I saw that the one of the foremost things we were doing to prepare for elections was buying heavier military equipment. When I remember the, the heavy trucks that went around Kampala after the last election spraying pink uh, water, uh, whatever the content was, I wish that after all these years we would have gone a long way from this, uh, that we would prepare for elections and not worry about the presence of armored personnel carriers and, and heavier machinery on Uganda's roads. That's why I feel sad. I feel sad that after all these years, this is what we must do before an election and not necessarily engage in a heated debate. I, in the U.S., for instance, before an election, the fever towards the caucus, the presidential debate, the, those countries have gone a long way and we seem to be cycling in the mud, you know, stuck between will there be violence, will there not be violence. Why at this point would I be worried about drive? I've spoken to people who tell me I'm going to stock sugar and, and beans and maize. I'm going to go out country. I'm going to go out of the country. And this is home. Polly, I know the police that say that, look, we are getting set. We are actually sending a message to Ugandans out there. Be safe. You know, don't worry about stocking maize, running to the village, going to Nairobi, some have said. But there seems to be a reverberating effect of what he does say. And you'll see it on social media, etc., etc. While you're trying to send a message that you are safe, we are keeping you safe, it's being received differently. We are worried. We should be concerned. Police is out to get us. Uh, well, I would like to uh, say hello to all Ugandans out there. And I would like to start on a note where I encourage my neighbor, my friend, uh, to feel sad no more. There is no reason to feel sad. And uh, I would like to, uh, to also uh, thank NTV because uh, usually we carry out operations and we try as much as possible to put them out there uh, to the public to get to know. And sometimes we don't get the voice, but NTV was out uh, there with our concrete mixers and everybody and showing Uganda that actually police is utilizing the money that we were given for, cro for procurement and that we have not uh, used it for other things. So it's good. And, uh, well, there's no reason for Ugandans to feel sad because this is just something that uh, the media have brought out. What about all that that they've not brought out? You know, we've been preparing over time. We've had, you know, it's not that the 2016 election has just happened. We have had all this time to prepare for the election. Uh, Uganda Police being the lead agency in securing uh, the elections, 
we have prepared. We have uh, done trainings, we have done procurements, we have done uh, capacity building. So in preparation just to ensure that uh, uh, our mandate of securing the people of Uganda and securing the properties of Ugandans is fulfilled. So there is no reason to, be, to feel insecure or to feel, uh, to feel threatened, but you should feel that Uganda police is actually out there to ensure that there is uh, peace for all Ugandans. And uh, one thing to note is that um, uh, you've seen all along, well, my colleague has said that we had uh, uh, vehicles that were pa painting uh, uh, people white and blue and green. How come in the nominations we didn't use them? Uganda police force is exercising a lot of restraint and that's our, that's our policy. We want to ensure that we restrain all use of force, whether necessary or unnecessary. And we want to, to give it to the Ugandans, because Ugandans, uh, the argument of Ugandans is that we are peaceful people, and we know they are peaceful people. Then why do you have to import all these things? The Ahmad reason, cars, you know, 11 reason, million crime preventers well, and so on. My dear friend, that's the reason we're giving it to them. We have them. We're not using them. So just in case there are people out there who think that they can, okay, they can get out of the peaceful nature of Ugandans and be on the other uh, unpeaceful side. We will pull out our things and ensure that, you know, we all are calm and Ugandans can go to vote in peace and come out in peace. We, no, want, to, we want to ensure that. Yeah. We want to ensure that. Ugandans can vote and vote peacefully and get back to their homes. Do not scare them with these things. When they see all these things, you know, they're thinking, ah, I was going them? out to Who vote, maybe them? now I should uh, withdraw them? a little NCV bit. NCV came out with them and scared them. <laughs> these things have been in the procurement process. We have actually procured so much more than what you saw. But, no, but I'm just thinking that um, when, you know, we get to hear candidate Museveni, for example, say I'll not hand over power to wolves and so on, then you hear candidate BCJ's camp saying, look, we're not going to allow them to swear in, etc., etc., we shall do whatever it takes and so on. I like to think that's incitement of violence on both ends. What do you expect these people to do for you and I, who are watching, we are expecting to be safe, and yet these two elephants are trying to fight? Let me tell you what would have given me more comfort mm. that the police could have done in the last two, three weeks. The moment a sound recording went viral, attributed to, and I don't know whether it was correct or not. Justin Kasule Lumumba? Justin Kasule Lumumba mm. saying, don't bring your children, the state will shoot them. The state will kill your children. The That's the what state it will says. kill your children. In, At least according to in, that record. In local dialect, in English. If the police had wanted me to feel safer, in the very least, they should have called out to the police and said, explain. Because if I had made that statement. I would like the assistant commissioner to assure me that I would have gotten home. Oh. Why? Because uh, Romushana comes out and says this is Aine. And he spends the night in jail. A picture. And he still reports to police. And he still reports. Justin Kasule Lumumba comes and says the state will kill your children. Don't send them out. That is basically the SG of what the, the party in power saying don't go and vote. Or, if you come and vote, and I lose, I will kill you. Now, that is institutionalized inciting of violence. It is the state itself sending that message. There have been comments attributed to the IGP. They, we have been here and debated crime preventers, and we have argued about being quoted out of context, and I don't think that the police has given us the impression that that artillery is for people who are not... Uh, being violent. And also, let's remember that there have been instances in the past when, in fact, even if someone were to be wanted by the police, if you recall the footage that made uh, Gilbert uh, Buana, mm. I think that's his mm. name, mm. were famous, I think that, I, I, as a lawyer, I don't speak out of tone when I say the police could have handled that situation better. We are human. We are Ugandan. Those images don't go away. When you see a police that handles a human being, forget about what his crime is. When you see a police that handles a human being the way they handled Besija that day, we must remember these images stay on the minds of people. And people react. Now, if mm. people react and you end up with a crowd and you shoot into that crowd, people were killed at, at Bulange in the Buganda riots. Oh, yes. Those people who shot in broad daylight, to the best of my knowledge, were not sentenced to death. As I know the law, they should have either got life or death, life in prison or death. Now, it is those instances that g compel my sadness when I say, oh, so after all these years of steady progress, 
we are steadily progressing to using even more force. Rather than, rather than turning um, down. That's where the issue is, Joel. That you see, you would say defiance is, is wrong. And, and BSG is wrong in that way. And I agree. I have argued on this set and other sets that no Ugandan should resort to violence. But in the end, you can't put out fire with fire. All right. Uh, very well granted. Look, incitement of violence, I like to think, Polly, can, can <coughs> be many faced. <coughs> One could be what we hear from these different camps. Clearly, they're inciting violence. We hope you can clap down on that. But again, there's the feeling that when police comes out with these armored cars and then you know you're you know, talking about violence and so on, 11 million crime preventers, etc., etc., in a very subtle way, you seem to be inciting violence. Well, because um, many people out Joe, there Joe will well, fear. Let's, let's really start there. Uh, I, when I started this uh, talk show, we said that, I said that uh, the Uganda police force has in stock many of these uh, equipment and that's just an addition so really this is not an issue now let's uh, get back the uh, let's get back to to what my colleague here said that uh, defiance is not right and i have also on different platforms said that to call for defiance is a call to people to rebel against institutions and also there's an undertone of violence just like he has said and um, well no ugandan should do that uh, remember, Can you not defy re if you re don't agree no, with something? Re remember, if you feel what, this remember what is happened. Out of order? Remember what happened in uh, in, uh, in in Rwanda in the genocide, uh, where people were calling uh, others cockroaches. You know the use of such terms. Oh, wait a minute. Are you the actually relating that cockroach terminology and so on to the, the defiance You know, campaign? I studied from Makere, and yeah. I would like to say that I know people win elections with very big words. Especially if you go to the campaigns at Lumumba, you realize that they use really heavy terms, and that has worked. But the use of such heavy terms as defiance and you continuously repeat it and pound it in the ears of Ugandans and you expect them to tolerate each other, that is a double standard. And uh, let me also say that um, uh, my colleague here talked about the, the issues, the sediments that were attributed to, uh, to the to IGP. IGP came out clearly in different statements and they are on record about what his intentions and what his message clearly was. And uh, well, it's not his, his, not his fault that some people out there decided to misinterpret his message. And any of us can be misinterpreted, but it's nice to come out clearly and state it. And uh, about uh, Madame Justin Lumumba, uh, well, it's, it's not that... Uh, it's not that, uh, that the election period is over already. And it's not that she has come out and said, I'm not going to, to explain this statement. And probably well, at least she, maybe you could someone had to explain like you do yes, to the others. We have, and we have. have, we have yes, our media and electoral crimes has already talked to her. And uh, we hope that she will be able to come out and give out her message about what she intended to mean. But, uh, but it's very nice also for all Ugandans to give people a chance. Because if people said that she said it, she needs to come out and say, did I, I said it or I didn't say it. And uh, sometimes when you take, video, when, when you, when you no, take voices, let me say this, <laughs> when you take voice recordings mm. to, uh, to, to court, there is need for a voice interpreter to be able to give evidence that actually that voice that you say belongs to Namai is actually the voice of Namai. Right, so right now we need to understand that. And uh, there is something you talked about, the, about the judges not be able, being able to convict some people to, to, to death. Well, he is a lawyer. And there are other lawyers like him who, who have been able to handle those people. So that's something for court. And uh, I really don't have much to say about it. But it's nice if lawyers uh, put together their act and decide. Uh, because we know that lawyers have a discretion. They can, they can decide to, uh, depending on the, on the crime committed and the evidence is there, to suggest somebody to any number of years. And I think that he, understa he understands that better than any of us here. Joel, let me give you the context. And I want, I want to disagree fundamentally Indeed, yeah. with, with SCP mm. on, on, on two issues. One is, the, the, and I cited both of them, mm. one is Kasule Lumumba. The NRM came out, their spokesperson issued a letter. They did not deny those statements. They said she meant to warn people. So I don't think there's any doubt as to what she meant. She has not denied the statements publicly or otherwise. Exactly. When the IGP statements became contentious, they mm. published the speech in the press, edited or otherwise, they put it there. She has not bothered to. From where I stand as a lawyer, that is very good grounds for someone to police. Indeed, and we now, said we conducted her. Mm. The thing is, if Bessie had made that statement, I mean, you've had statements from basically enlisting comments from the commander in the, the, of the, uh, the CDF of the UPDF, the Prime Minister of Uganda, the spokesperson of the government, not even the party, Mr. Ofono Pondo, and 
you can clearly see that they are treating some things more seriously than others. At least the people in the police are. So you're saying what's good I for the goods should be good for the Ghana. It be good for the Ghana. All right, that let's move away from, from this point. Joe, just mm. before we go, the issue that she talked about, the, mm. the victims of the Buganda riots and yes, the perpetrators, yes. it is not that the lawyers were muddling around the waters. We know that the police has been on the spot before with regard to how they handle suspects and how they handle other issues. It had nothing to do with lawyers in that case. All right, let's Everything move on. Now, as we continue how discussing... The police would prosecute and what mm. evidence they would avail in those cases. That is where things went wrong. All right, and that um, is we, we have taken note of that. As we keep yes. discussing the role of security agencies and for this matter, police in these elections, mm. I'd like to quote, um, because again, it, it, it raises a lot of dust when the police is seen as partisan and yes, henceforth yes. their role getting sure. to be seen as biased. In October 2014, during a lecture at Makere University, mm. uh, General Kaliechezi Kaihura, mm. often known as Kali Kaihura, your boss, was quoted as saying, I hear some people say Museveni should go because he is old. Those who talk like that are sick. There is no one on this continent who has a more youthful vision than Museveni. If some of you don't value him, for me I still value him. Now, after a very short while, it should have been at the start of uh, 2015, Siraje Bakareke, who got promoted uh, like you did, she was at a speech day somewhere in Mukono, and he went on and on and did open the campaign for candidate Museveni. When we keep seeing this, do you not feel that there is reason for people out there to be worried about the role police is going to play in this election if the head of police has been seen to come out openly to campaign for one of the candidates and, of course, several other senior police officers? Well, I don't see anything partisan about an IGP appreciating the role of the, of the president. You don't see anything and partisan no, I, about I this quote I just read? Please, please try to understand that the president of the Republic of Uganda today mm. is the sitting president. And uh, I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, that IGP can say that he values the president. There is nothing wrong with that. And uh, I believe that anybody who has been partisan in, in, uh, in police and has been seen to have been involved in partisan politics, for example, uh, one of our own personnel who was seen uh, casting a vote in the, in the primaries in police uniform uh, was put to, to explain and was, is being taken through the disciplinary court. Uh, well, I think that uh, the police really plays the neutral part and that we should be able to understand that they are Ugandans and that they live in the Ugand Ugandan community. They have a role to play in contributing uh, to, to, uh, to the Ugandan community, but as well they have a stand because policemen as well uh, can vote. They are able to vote um, and, uh, and, and because they, they have somebody they support. Uh, although they shouldn't exercise uh, partisanship uh, on uniform and on duty and also to go about talking about it because policemen are on duty 24 hours. And so while on duty, they must not show uh, that they support anybody. But there's nothing wrong with a policeman moving to a polling station and casting a vote for the person that they support because we have the secret ballot. They don't have to show who they support, but they, have, uh, they are able to vote and, uh, and, and, and be able to support uh, the, the election process. So there's nothing wrong with that, and I don't want any Ugandan to be out there to think that policemen should not vote or should not be able to, 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 uh, to talk about politicians uh, in the country. For example, uh, HE, because HE is the sitting president. Whether or not he's, the, he's a candidate in the election, he is the sitting president, and I have nothing wrong, uh, I have nothing against anybody coming out uh, to, to, to tell people that they value the president, really. Robert, do you find anything partisan about this quote, or perhaps we're just being too hard on this man? For goodness sake, uh, Candid Museveni is the president, so you know he was probably just saluting him. But even more fundamentally, I think, yeah. because you see the police inevitably has got a role to play in this election. Yeah. But do you feel the general public, do you feel there is believability? Because that's very important, that we believe as a police force, you're coming in as neutral arbiters, you're coming in as referees, if you like, so we can trust you. Do you feel that trust is there? Two things, Joel. One, about the IGP. Mm. Uh, Shakespeare said, heavy is the head that wears the crown. No one is saying the police should not vote. I would yeah. aggressively defend their right under Article 59. Every single police officer, including the IGP, must have the right to vote. And they must exercise that right. And I think we should encourage them to go and mm -hmm. vote. But you see, for you to come out and say that statement, and a few others that I have personally heard, you are basically saying that should the EC announce another president, you will leave no option as to where you stand. Because you are clear, he has put his views out there. The issue is not that he can't have views, but in that office, he cannot promote 
those views the way they are. The, 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 the spokesperson just said, look, you have your views, if you're in uniform, don't express them. That must apply to the IGP as well, and I think that is extremely partisan, and he, he has left no doubt where he is. Now, what is the problem with that position? The position is that the Uganda police is the institution we must all feel safe to run to. Yeah. Now we run away from them. I was alive and I was following closely when the Julia 17 the commission took place. You should have watched how that, that, that commission of inquiry tore apart the police. They, they were left with no respect whatsoever. And when General Katumba Amala took over the police shortly after uh, that, that commission of inquiry, mm. you could see a lot of effort went into rebuilding the image of mm. that institution to the point where Ugandans could feel they trusted this force. Now I fear that we've gone back to the place where people say, who? Ah, ah. Let's go create power 10. And that is very dangerous because in the end, they are armed. Mm. They are we need to wrap this up. They uh, get emotional and things can go wrong. So unfortunately, I think that those kinds of positions take away rather than build the respect and integrity of the police. And we all agree they play a fundamental role. And they must because that's their statutory duty. Mm -hmm. They play a fundamental role in keeping the peace. Mm -hmm. not Very just final report. Mm -hmm. Do you not feel it's at all order now for you, your involvement in elections such as this, when that's what the general public seems to see you as? biased, partisan, they know where you seem to belong, so they will not trust you even when you come in to, I don't know, as an arbiter or that kind of thing, they will actually want to hound you. Uh, well, you let, well let me say this, that um, uh, we have a mandate to play. We were yeah. given the mandate by the Constitution of Uganda. If you look at Article 211 and Article 212, and we are privileged because the, the mandate could have gone to any other institution uh, in, in, in Uganda, but the police has the mandate to lead uh, the security of, of the country. And um, let me also say that uh, there are Ugandans out there. Actually, I chance to talk with an Indian uh, who told me that Ugandans don't appreciate the, the value of the police that they have. Uh, because in India, it's I hope a the police situation. appreciate and, uh, Ugandan. Uh, 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 and no, that, that's what, them that, with respect. That, that, that's what he observed. And uh, well, I don't agree because we have very many Ugandans uh, who are willing to work with us. We have partnerships. We have actually people uh, like the banks who have come out and said, for patrols, we want to partner with you. We have motorcycles at our discretion. You can use them. We have patrollers in Kololo uh, who are partnering with police. Well, I don't agree when you say that Ugandans uh, feel they can't trust the police. I know that, uh, well... Uh, politically, uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it's something that uh, we, we won't discuss here, but uh, I believe that there are many Ugandans who are operating their businesses day and night if you pass through Kampala and they're enjoying the security. So really, what else can testify that there is security in Uganda? Let, well, me, let me also say... Lord, I am one of yes. those who salute the Uganda Thank police force, uh, but I'm also one of those who expect and, better and, from and, the Uganda and, police And I'm not, saying, I'm not, I'm not saying that Uganda police has reached where we want to be, but I'm saying that where we are and where we are going, we can see that we have a very beautiful future. You have progressed steadily. Yes, because whatever we are doing, <laughs> whatever we are doing, whatever uh, we are doing is based on intelligence. We have built capacity in the intelligence. Uh, we... For example, the, for the elections, we're going to have uh, a joint intelligence uh, system. We have already set it up at the national level, regional level, district level. And we also have sent out over 27 teams. And uh, these teams have uh, a lot of work to do. So we have uh, given them the mandate to all the regions. We believe and trust that the research we have done, the deployment plan that we have come up with, we believe that we'll be able to secure Ugandans and would like to partner with them. The Uganda police force is not selfish. We don't want to think that we can do everything on our own. That's the reason we call out to Ugandans to come out and help us secure Uganda by first of all being, all right, that's by of all being as peaceful mm. as we are said to be. Ugandans are said to be very peaceful people, very loving, very warm-hearted. Let's I'm afraid we cannot go that, further. Yes. But that's a critical point. Yes, you know? I, I go I out and cast yes. your ballot, but do so as peacefully do, as you can. Do tolerate Paul each other. Paul Deputy Spokesperson of the Thank Uganda Police Force. Uh, now Assistant Commissioner of Police, thanks thank for joining us, well, and of yeah. course, as always, thank Councilor you. Robert Kiruna. Thank, thank you. Right. Pleasure. Yes, thank you. And there thank you are. That's you. the big debate for tonight. Look, go out, cast your ballot. That's very important, but let's remain peaceful. Uganda is bigger than all these politicians. Uganda is going to survive and exist after February 18th. So let's make this happen. My name is Joel Senyonyi, and that's tonight's big debate.